Hey everyone, welcome to Two Car Pros. My name is Ryan and today we're doing something very exciting. We are continuing our How to Build a Big Block series, episode 16. Today's a busy one because we're going to be wiring our starter, our alternator. We're also putting in our coolant and oil pressure senders. We're also going to prime the engine with oil, which we probably should have done uh, earlier in this build, but I didn't have the tools, so uh, I had to do it later. And it kind of worked out anyway because the original ignition system that we had in it uh, it turned out to not be so great, so I replaced it with a quality unit. The link is down below in the description. Uh, and then we prime the engine and we put it back together and then we also put the oil filter on so that's all very exciting. We also put power steering fluid in the reservoir. So why is that important? Well, it's pretty cool because in order to get power steering fluid to cycle through the power steering system, we have to turn the engine over and we use the starter to do that. So it is the first time the big block has turned over by the starter on the engine itself. It is really, really exciting. We're really coming down to the end of this long series. I'm sorry these videos haven't been out as much as I probably would have liked, but you have to understand that we are doing something here on YouTube that has never been done before. No one, as far as I know, on YouTube has shown you exactly how to put a big block Chevy together bolt by bolt. I don't think anybody's done that. Plenty of people have done big block build videos, but no one's done it to the detail I have, so I'm pretty proud of that. With all that jabbering out of the way, let's get to wrenching. So we're gonna start today's video off right here at our firewall. Our big block is here in our 1967 Camaro. This is gonna look a little bit different per application, depending if you're putting your big block in an old truck or a boat or anything that's not a 67 Camaro, but these two wires that we're gonna focus on are universal, so just pay attention. So we're gonna go ahead and zoom in here, and then we can see this red feed wire, it's normally labeled as 12 volt feed or something like that. You can always tell it's the feed wire for your car because it'll be a bigger gauge and it's red. And then our next wire we're gonna worry about is this purple one. This is our ignition trigger that's actually hooked up to our neutral safety switch and the key, this is what's gonna tell the starter to work. So we just need to follow this purple wire and this red wire over to the starter. So we're over here on the starter side of the engine. Luckily we have some long tube headers we can kinda see on in there and what you're looking at is the solenoid that's this part on top of the starter and down below it's the actual starter motor so why is that important well the solenoid is going to designate electricity to the motor to run so what are the two things you need to worry about this on the end of my index finger this is where that purple wire goes the ignition wire so this actually tells the solenoid to send electricity to the motor and you know basically say hey work now how does it get power that's what this is about where my index finger is now, we're gonna put the feed line from the battery on to this stud here. And you can always tell that this is the feed line because it doesn't have a wire running from this stud to the motor. This actually, you don't really need to take off, leave that on, all good. We're just gonna be worrying about this one on uh, the top of your screen. All right, got a little pointer here. You can see that we've attached where my pointer is now. That is the feed from the battery to the starter. This wire here, this one there goes to the main feed of the car. So that's that wire we talked about earlier coming out of the fuse block. And this wire right here, that is going to go to our alternator, which we'll go over in just a minute. That actually um, keeps the car charged from the alternator. And then our purple wire we attached right there, and that's our ignition trigger. So I also wanted to go over tightness on these as well, because these studs, are uh, mounted in a composite plastic. Uh, they have to be snug, but not crazy tight. If you hear anything crack while you're tightening, go ahead and get a different starter because this one's no longer useful to you. That stud has to be insulated and you cracking it just broke the insulation. So, you know, snug is good with that. So I'm at the back of our alternator here and this is a self-exciting alternator. It makes a little bit hot rod a little special because it only requires one wire to the back of it to wire it because it just makes power all the time, has a voltage regulator built in, and you only need to connect it with that wire that I showed earlier at the starter. Now, if you don't have a self-exciting alternator, you're gonna have a brown wire coming from the ignition that's gonna hook into right here. 
Um, and usually you can find some wiring diagrams online to show you how that would work, but for us today we just have the one wire to worry about. So we're going to go ahead and remove the nut and washer off the back here. We can go ahead and slink our eyelet over, making sure that the battery is disconnected before we do any of this. In fact, don't even have the battery in the car while you're wiring. Put that on. On our alternator is a 10 millimeter, and you might notice that I'm using kind of a tiny wrench, and that's because this isn't on super tight. Again, this is also in that composite we mentioned earlier, and you can break it, and if that's the case, well, you're kind of SOL. So, because this wire is live at all times, it's kind of dangerous just to have out in the open. So make sure you have one of these nice rubber boots that you can put over it to prevent any accidental grounding. And just like that, it looks perfect. So there's two basic senders we need to worry about here, and this is what we're gonna focus on next. This is our oil pressure sender, hooks up to our gauge, and our coolant temp sender. Now both of these senders come with your gauges, so that is something you're gonna have to source yourself. I've left a link down below in the description to the gauges I've used, but they are pretty pricey and they're pretty much for um, a 67 Camaro. I guess you could use them in a few other GM uh, applications or hot rod stuff, but uh, you know, they're, they're special to your gauges. So if you buy a temperature gauge, it's gonna come with this, or if you buy an oil pressure gauge, it's gonna come with this. So that's something to keep in mind. They don't really sell them separately. And they do that because this sender has to be calibrated exactly to the gauge in the car or else it's not gonna work correctly. So the first sender we're going to do is our oil pressure sender. Doesn't really matter what order you go in. And it comes with two adapters, a small one and a big one. Well, we're building a big block, so it uses the big adapter. We can put the small one aside and uh, use some pipe thread tape. So what we need to do is get some pipe tape. This is available anywhere, but I will leave a link below in the description. Sometimes it's called Teflon tape. And the key to this is you wanna put it on, so that way if you're rotating this onto the fitting, the tape doesn't wind itself off. What I like to do is just kinda of pretend that my fingers are the fitting that I'm gonna be um, fixing this into, and just go like this. And you want to go at least three times around. There's number three. Like that, and you can see how nice that looks. And you don't want it on the very bottom, and then you don't want it covering that hole either. So it needs to look just like this. So now we can do our adapter. And what you want to do too is keep it back one thread, because you don't want any Teflon tape getting in the way of our sender there. So again, we're just going to go around that those threads three times. Goes over three. And then you can then what you can do too is just take your fingers like this and if you've done it right, you can rotate this to the right with your fingers and it won't come off. So this is perfect. So now we can do the exact same thing for our coolant temp sender. Exactly the same process. No different at all. There we go. There's our adapter handled, and then we also got to do our coolant temps under two because there's because there's threads right there. There we go. That looks excellent and is ready for the car. So the reason we put Teflon tape on all of these threads is so that way no fluid can seep past the threads and cause a leak. All right, so we are on the driver's side of the vehicle and this is where our oil filter is gonna mount, right where my hand is. Above that is where we're looking today. There is a plug in the way of where our oil pressure sender is going to go. And we actually loosened this earlier uh, when the engine was on the stand, kind of broke it loose, make it a little easier on ourselves. Uh, but you could break it loose with it in the uh, car, it looks like it's... Uh, and this is a uh, 5 16 Allen. So go ahead and remove that. So now we can grab our adapter that we put uh, Teflon tape on earlier and put it in that port there. At least get it started. And then we can get a socket on there. So we're gonna take our 11 16 socket and snug this adapter on up. Don't really have a torque spec for you, just tight. There we go. 
All right, now we can go ahead and put our oil pressure sender in and the uh, nut on the end there, that is 916. So go ahead and grab that wrench. And we can just start that by hand. And we always want to tighten it using the wrench. You can start it by using your hand on the housing, but if that rotates the housing on the body of the uh, sender, it might not work. So I want to do that. So we can use our 916s here and uh, tighten the nut. That's actually what you're supposed to do. And this is just pipe thread, so you know you'll feel it. You know it'll get really, really tough. Just stop. There we go. So now we can put on our oil pressure sender wire. Have a little eyelet on there. Put that on. Don't worry about the orientation just yet. We just want to put that on and get the nut on there, which came with our kit. What you want to do is keep this as far away from the header as possible. Obviously, headers get very, very hot and that can melt wires. So just angle that away from your header as much as possible. And then we're gonna tighten that up using a 5 16 little tiny, tiny guy here. Don't go crazy tight. It has a lock washer on there, it'll be fine. And it's just 5 16 you know. That's good enough. And then what we're also gonna do is I'm gonna take the eyelet and bend it backward towards the body of our sender. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is our oil filter. You've probably done this a few times on your own vehicle. Oil, oil filter. The only thing that's a little special here is that with these older engines, especially with the flat tap at cam, you need special break in oil. See how it has ZDDP enhance? Basically that stands for zinc. It has extra zinc inside of the oil. Most modern uh, motor oils uh, don't actually have that. Or you can, sometimes you can just put additive in it, but I got this from comp cams. It's 10W30, break in oil. It's perfect for our engine. Here for our oil filter, it's an AC Delco PF1218, link down below in the description to both of these awesome products. As far as filtration goes, I always recommend AC Delco. What we're gonna do too is something I don't usually do. If you've seen my videos before, I don't usually fill up oil filters because on more modern vehicles, it's kind of unnecessary and they've already had a bunch of oil run through them. They aren't a dry engine. There's plenty of oil in there, it's okay, and the oil filter fills within about a second. It's all right. But this engine's brand new. It's never been ran before. It is the old style, and the oil filter is vertically mounted. Because on more modern stuff, it's actually mounted parallel with the ground. So there's no way you could keep engine oil in there. So those are some of the reasons why I'm doing that today. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just get some of the, that new engine oil before we forget and apply it to the seal there. Just a nice light film like that, very cool. And then we're just gonna fill that oil filter up. This oil filter is a big boy. <laughs> this oil filter is like half a quart. So it's uh, perfect just like that. Now it's ready for installation. All right, now we can install our filter. Gingerly push that on, making sure you don't cross thread it. There we go. Now a lot of people ask me how tight you put an oil filter on. I just like to go snug, it even says on the label that you go snug and then one to one quarters turns more. I just like to put it on as tight as I can with one hand. Don't go crazy Hulk tight. One hand tight's good. Just like that. So now we're on the top side of the engine. This is our intake manifold. You can tell there's our thermostat housing kind of relation where we are on the right side of the engine if you're standing directly in front of it. And we're gonna grab our adapter for our coolant temp sender and just put that in there. Now, here's the thing. Our intake manifold is not cast iron. It's actually made of aluminum. And if yours is too, be really careful here. You can crack the intake manifold and then you're replacing it. So we're gonna go ahead and grab our 7 eighths, 7 eighths socket and just give that a little snug, not crazy, don't go crazy. That's all I'm gonna give it and then we can move on. So now we can put our coolant temp sender in. Now this is even finer thread and it is very, very delicate. And you know, it's, this sender is delicate itself because it has to sense things and if you over tighten that, it can make it not work properly. And we're gonna use a 13 millimeter wrench 
to snug it on down, but just be careful, you don't want to over tighten it. And I'm using a very small wrench, and that is all I'm going to give it. Now we can plug it in. So what I've got here is my, you can even read it there on the wire, water temp sender. It's a green wire for me. I have a female blade connector on the end of that, available at any auto parts store. I'm just going to put it on just like that. We can route the cable how we want later on. Before we go any further too, I want to go ahead and mention that our battery is in the trunk. That is where we're hooked up and it's actually connected right now. You can see this red cable runs the entire length of the car, goes through the uh, trunk floor, and then goes up and hooks into our starter like I showed earlier. And then this negative cable just grounds right to the body because this mount is actually bolted into steel and the steel is welded to the body of the car. So that is where our battery ground is at and we're using the car as a big battery ground so we can complete a circuit. So if you had your battery where it normally is in the engine compartment, you'd basically do the exact same thing, running one ground to the body and one ground to the engine block. So you have to ground out your engine block and you have to ground your battery to the car. So this just kind of kills two birds with one stone and it puts the battery in the trunk for a much cleaner installation. So our engine block is grounded right there on the back using a bell housing bolt, kind of hard to see. And then it runs with our positive cable that we hooked into our starter. And then it comes up and attaches right here to the body. So that is how our engine is grounded. So now we're getting ready to oil prime the engine and there is no engine oil in it, just some assembly lubrication. So we're gonna go ahead and remove our breather and place it, replace it with a funnel. So now we're gonna put in six quarts of our break-in oil. And there we go, quart number six. And now we can put the breather back on. So now we can replace our breather. We already removed our funnel, obviously. Just push that back into place. Luckily with a little bit of lubrication, it's a little bit easier. So now we're gonna talk about priming the engine. So you can do this pretty much at any time. Basically you wanna do it um, before you put the distributor in. We didn't have the tool at the time, so we put the distributor in and then we put the engine in the car. But we realized that uh, after we put the distributor in, we thought it was brand new, but look, see this plate right here? See how that jiggles all about? That's not good. It'll never ever be correctly timed if this plate jiggles and wobbles around like that. So it's unfortunately junk, but the good news is we'll be able to replace it with a HEI system, which everyone else was pretty vocal about us using anyway. So this is gonna come out and we can prime the engine with oil. So before we remove this, I wanna tell you that we are at um, TDC on number one, and we can tell it because our rotor is pointing at number one. So when we replace our distributor, our rotor has to look exactly like that. And we're not gonna turn the engine over while we're priming the engine. So we can grab our 9 sixteenths and loosen the hold down bolt for the housing. Just like that, we can remove our hold down and then we can remove carefully our distributor. And you also want to make sure that everything around the distributor body is very clean because you don't want any dirt and crud getting down there. Go ahead and lift her back out. Here we go. And take it away. So what I have here is an engine oil priming tool. This will go down and on that oil pump tang that I showed earlier. And ours is made by the wonderful people over at ARP. Link down below in the description at Summit Racing. This is for Chevys. So this is for small blocks and big blocks for Chevrolet products. They are different if you have a Mopar or a Ford product. So you're gonna have to buy that depending on what you're doing. But since we're doing a Chevrolet big block, the big block tool is what we need. So basically this is going to go down where our distributor would go. And then we're gonna put a drill on this end here. This goes on the oil tang and we're gonna go clockwise with it just like our distributor would. And that is going to build oil pressure for us. Now, how do you tell how you have oil pressure? Well, there's two ways. The first way is you can remove a valve cover and wait for oil to come up into the valves. I don't like doing that because it can be messy and we've already put the valve covers on and we just put our oil 
pressure sender in, so why not test that out so we'll be able to see it on the gauge. All right, so now we can grab our tool, slink it down into our distributor well there, and what we're gonna do is put it in place, and we can rotate it just slightly. There we go, you see that just, you know, click down into place, and if I try to turn it, it's pretty tough, so I can tell there is engagement on that tang, and you wanna make sure that this is fully seated down. You don't want that engagement to just barely be there, and then it breaks off that tang or something crazy like that. So you wanna make sure that this is nice and in and where it should be, and you can kind of feel it with your hand. If you try to turn this, it'll kind of feel like hydraulic pressure because it kind of feels like a little bit of a wave. So now I can place our drill on here, and I'm using a pretty heavy-duty drill, and I'm gonna go big. I'm going to be going very slowly with it. All right, now we're ready to go. I've just got my drill motor here, and we're just gonna go nice and slow with uh, even oil pressure. Now we're gonna check the gauge. So I'm inside the car now. I'm at our brand new gauges, and this on our left here where it says press, it stands for oil pressure. And now we're gonna hit the drill. And look at that. Up to 75 PSI. At this point, go ahead and check underneath the engine, make sure oil's not just dumping all out over the ground. Uh, what we're gonna do is let this drill run here for about a minute. We're gonna make sure that oil's getting all the way through the engine. So now what we can do is remove our priming tool and have a terry towel ready because it's gonna be covered in oil. So now we have a Pertronix flamethrower built distributor uh, that is high energy ignition. So we can take that out of the box. And this, the cool thing about this, unit is that it is programmable. You can put a little box there and tune it exactly how you like, but it does come stock built in with a normal tune, and that's the one we're probably gonna be using to um, start the engine, break it in. And if I wanna put a box in it later, I guarantee you will see it here on the channel. So we can take that out of its packaging. And look how nice that is. Woo! That is pretty right there. So we can go ahead and take the wires off inspect it, make sure it's in good shape, and we can take the cap off it. Remove that, and we can see our rotor there. Very cool. So before we install it, we'll just put on the gasket we removed off the other units, a Felpro gasket, link below in the description. And uh, then we need to put some break-in oil on our gear here. I'm gonna grab some Permatex Ultra Slick, link down below in the description, and I'm just gonna sauce up our gear don't be afraid to use too much. You can't use too much, but you can use too little. So, don't be shy. Really goop her up. Especially get in between this crevice here. There we go, now that is ready for installation. So with our rotor pointed at number one and our vacuum advance kind of pointed at, uh, towards the passenger side, we can go ahead and lower that back down in there. So you can see that we do not have engagement all the way with our oil tang. At this juncture, do not force it. Don't hit it with a hammer. Don't put a bunch of force on it. And our rotor's not in correct anyway, so we're in totally wrong. But this gives us a great opportunity to talk about walking the distributor in. So you can see that our rotor is pointed nowhere near number one. That's not right. And our engagement with the oil pump tang, they ain't in there. That's why that gap's there. That isn't right. So what you can do is lift the distributor up. You can see it rotated a little bit. And we can just rotate it along the gears. And that's not right. So that's correct with our oil engagement, our oil tank engagement, but you can see our rotor is pointed way off in the wrong direction. So we gotta keep walking it. And as I move this, like this, the tang is gonna rotate with it. So we're gonna keep getting that engagement. It's actually still engaged. So I'm gonna remove it again, rotate it again, and it's down. So we know that the engagement with the uh, oil pump tang is correct, so we just keep walking it on these teeth until we get it facing cylinder one. So I'm getting close. Just lift it up again, rotate it a little bit, point it at number one just like that, and that's exactly where it needs to be. So it's all the way down now. Our rotor is pointing in the right spot directly at um, cylinder number one because we never moved the engine. It's still a TDC on number one. Um, and now we can replace our hold down here just lightly so we can still move our body. Because you can move the body all you want right now. This won't affect um, the rotor's relation to timing. 
right now because we're not starting it. So we can move that out of the way and put our hold down on, at least loosely. So now we can replace our cap. And it only goes on one way. There's a little key at the back of it. Go ahead and grab a scanner screwdriver and put the hold downs back on. There we go. Now we can tell where cylinder number one is in relation on our cap. So what we're gonna do is locate number one. It's this one right here. And what I'm going to do is put a gold one on it so we can never get lost. We always know where home is. And then right below it, we're just gonna put a nice little black mark here. And that is gonna tell us where on the distributor body number one is. So our vacuum advance is on the passenger side of the vehicle. So we know that if we pull this toward us, we're going to get advanced timing. If we push it away, it's going to retard our timing. So we're going to pull this towards us about eight degrees. Think about 360, 360 degrees in a circle, about eight degrees uh, worth of that to help with our initial startup. And now we can lock her down. Just give it a little snug, not crazy. And that's good. So on tightness with the distributor, you want it to be uh, decently snug, um, not so you can just grab it and wiggle it. Uh, freely because as soon as you start the engine the engine will just turn it and then you're well kind of SOL So you want to make it you know decently snug here I have a crow's foot wrench to help us out they actually make a special tool just for that you want to make sure the engagement on or hold down is um, On there as well because this is actually slotted so you don't want to have that to have um, crappy engagement You want to make sure that this is nice and seated and then you can't just wiggle this body with your hand very easily. So now we're gonna put some power steering fluid in. We're just gonna put this in now. You can put it in pretty much whenever, just before you're gonna start. But I'm gonna put it in now so I don't forget. We can remove our cap here, replace it with a funnel. And then as far as power steering fluid goes, uh, I'm just gonna use Mercon 5. I know it's a Ford product, it's fine. Any automatic transmission fluid uh, will work. It's just hydraulic fluid, it's, don't be too picky about it. And we're just gonna dump some in. Just keep an eye on it. Don't pour, don't try to pour a whole quart in or anything. You just don't want it overflowing. You can just look it down in there and uh, it still needs more. You want it about there where my finger is. Just keep looking down in there. There we go. The level right now is just about right there. So now what we can do is uh, crank the car over a little bit and watch the level drop and we can add some more. So we're about to crank over our big block. I removed the tape from up top there so it doesn't suck tape through the intake there. And then we can hear it uh, crank over and we can watch our fluid drop. So now this is the first time our big block's gonna turn over via the starter with no big breaker bar or anything. I'm pretty darn excited and uh, we're gonna keep an eye on the power steering pump fluid level. So let's go ahead and hit the starter. see the level drop a little bit so it needs a little bit more and uh, don't worry about timing or oil or anything the engine has oil the distributors locked down so we can sit there and crank it all day if we want to do so we can just top that up there check down there okay it's pretty good it's right about here at the end of my finger and uh, there we go we'll worry about that level more after we're hearing the car run and you might hear a kind of a grinding sound and stuff and that's aeration inside of the system so we're gonna have to add some more fluid later on in the life of the engine but that is for another day we can go ahead and replace our camp and there we go so that is how you uh, prime an engine wire starter and alternator put power steering fluid in here turn over put the senders in uh, and put a new ignition system in. I also wanted to do this video again because before I dropped the distributor in and it just kind of went perfectly into uh, its home. That's not really typical of how that normally goes. Usually you have to do what I did and uh, walk the distributor around uh, to get it to be pointing at number one and for that oil tang engagement to be correct. So uh, I'm glad I had to do that, redo that part a little bit and uh, it makes it for a more complete series. So if you're ever in that situation, you know exactly what to do. Thank you so very much for watching. Uh, we will be coming down to the end of this big block series. You will be hearing it run pretty quick here. I am trying to, and hold me to this, I am trying to get this engine started before the end of the year. It is Friday the 11th, so I'm hoping to have this thing running before the first of the year. So hopefully, 
uh, before December 31st. We will be able to hear that run and you will see that right here on this channel. So make sure you subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.